Okay, last week we were talking about, in Matthew and Luke, we were just getting there talking about these genealogies, right? We've got two different ones here. In, uh, when you look in Matthew chapter 1, the book of Matthew starts out, <clears throat> and it literally starts out with the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That's how it starts. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay? So notice, first of all, he starts with Abraham, and then he goes all the way down till Jesus is born. Who did he leave out? He left out basically everybody above Abraham. You have no mention of Adam here, right? You have no mention of Noah. You start with Abraham. Something to notice, first of all, in, uh, in Matthew. Matthew is looking at it from a Jewish standpoint. When we get to Luke, we're going to be looking at it from the standpoint of uh, Mary, Mary's side, and more of kind of like the legal tracing through. So, so keep that in mind. So here we have, I said this last week, I always thought this was a riot. Which of Shem's sons <laughs> is the lineage of Jesus traced through, right? You got this weirdo named Arphaxad, and you often don't hear about him. But when you start out from Shem in Genesis 11, you go from Shem to Abram, you got all this tracing going on, and it goes in verses 10 and 11 of Genesis 11. Let's just take a quick look at that. This is the, these are the verses nobody likes to read. Yeah, when I was teaching uh, youth Sunday school, I tried this once. I had about two kids not go to sleep. So here you've got, look at this. This is um, in verse 10 of Genesis 11. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. Arphaxad lived 35 years and begot Salah. So you start, here I highlighted in yellow. You can see what's being called out in Genesis. And you've got... You've got the tracing that's going through verses 12 to 17. Now, Eber has two sons, Joktan and Peleg. And you see he's tracing in Genesis where he mentions the sons, but then he ends up with Peleg. And then he goes to Ru and Sarek and Nair. So you've got, you wonder when you read this in Genesis, who cares, <laughs> right? This is what separates our Bible from any other book. We think of this as a religious book. It's, it's so much more than a religious book. This is history. This is genealogies. In fact, when you think about the Table of Nations, nobody is able to explain where different skin colors and heredities come from outside of Genesis 10 and 11. When you look at the different people groups that you find in the different sons of Noah, you can trace by genealogies back to the Russians, back to the Chinese, back to the Persians. It's amazing. That's not taught either, but this is the only place you're gonna find it. In fact, if you look under these, right now we've got some crazy things going on with, uh, the Syrians, right? What's going on right now with Turkey and Syria, where Turkey's invading Syria? We know in Syria they were doing the nerve gas, killing their own people. Syrians descend through Aram, one of the sons of Shem. So if you actually look through genealogies and you looked at, you can find it in DNA tracing. You can find where every people group comes from. It's pretty amazing stuff. So then you end up with in Genesis 12, now things are happening. Now all of a sudden we get a little bit of a shift. In Genesis 12, some covenant's happening, right? Now all of a sudden God singles out a guy. He singles out this one person called Abram and says, it's going to be through you. And notice what he says different. He says in end of verse 3, all the families of the earth. Not the Jews, not certain groups in the Middle East. Everybody's going to be blessed through this one guy. 
So you guys, did, now what does that mean for you? What's the big deal? I'm Gentile. Huh? Gentile. Gentile. Oh, well, I know you're Gentile. I'm looking right at you, man. I know that. <laughs> what else does it mean? And can you shoot, by the way? Or are you just picking on me? Can you oh, shoot? I can shoot? Oh, you could shoot. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so we've got something else significant about Abraham. He's called the father of our faith. Literally, you're a descendant of Abraham spiritually. I don't know if you knew that. We, we covered this in book one. You can go back later and study it. But literally, you, and matter of fact, Paul in Romans chapter four goes through this, about how you are justified through the faith of Abraham because of this covenant, which is why God will never desert Israel. Another reason, because he made a promise to all the patriarchs that they're a special people. So here you have a covenant that's a spiritual one. And this covenant separates out Isaac. Now all of a sudden there's a covenant. It's not Ishmael, it's Isaac. You get another covenant. It's not Esau, it's Jacob. And each one is talking about blessing the nations, not the Jews, all people. Then all of a sudden he picks out one, the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from its feet until Shiloh comes. So now all of a sudden you have Messiah is coming through this, the line of Judah, which then flows down into Jesse, which then flows down into David, which then ends up, ends up with this carpenter. So following Genesis and tracing it through and tying it back to the lineages is a big deal. Because if Jesus gets this wrong, he's not Messiah. We are worshiping the wrong guy. <laughs> we are following Phil and Phil is leading us astray. So like anything, if you're gonna get a degree in accountant, be an accountant in finance, if you're gonna get a degree in engineering to be a civil engineer, there are courses you take where you're forced to make sure you understand. You know, in engineering, I have to understand mechanics and materials and how a material will fail at a certain loading. I have to understand that stuff because the last thing you want is, oh, we got to design a bridge. Well, well I, you know, I uh, saw it on, uh, in a hotel or, you know, I watched, a, I watched a YouTube. I think I could do it. You know, nobody's going to want me, right? Or if you have a, you need your gallbladder removed. You know, I'm feeling pretty good. I watched a couple of YouTubes. I think I could do it, right? And yet when it comes to our faith, do we take it that seriously? Where we say, wait a minute, what are the credentials behind this person? Does he really meet the credentials so I should follow him? This is the boring stuff, right? This is the stuff that a lot of times we're not willing to invest our time in to, to look at. 